great day. You're listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. Well, I am excited to be with you. I know I've said that over and over again, every single time that you've met me here for the last five years, but it's true. I get excited about God, about my encounters with him, about his word. I get excited about faith and about just being able to share faith and to share the words that God gives to me to share with you. And I'm super excited this morning because God literally shifted the trajectory of today's message. Um, I, I, um, I will just get right into it because, um, there have been some things that have been like on my heart and in my spirit. And I'm like, Lord, like literally just, um, you know, just help me through this time, help me through this situation. And it's not that it's been anything that's bad at all. Like I've really come to understand that when I feel like things are shaking around me or I see things moving or people falling off or, um, and I know that's kind of like slang, but, um, you understand, um, things that that's just happening. I've learned to just wait to, to see the hand of God moving in. And, and I, I got real churchy on y'all. I apologize for that. W- what I mean by that is, You'll see things happening, but what I've learned to do is trust God. Basically, I've just learned to um, wait on him, to believe him, to be in expectation of him. Because anytime it looks like or feels like something's being shaken up or moved, it serves a greater purpose. And so um, I always just get excited. I don't always like it. I don't always like the things that happen. I'm human, man. No one signs up and is like, hey, yo, <laughs> Give me some heartbreak. Give me some uh, what appears to be lost. But um, as I get into today's uh, word message, you will, I think you'll better understand what I'm attempting to say. So I'm going to just go right to it. The title of today's message, today's podcast is Necessary Adjustments. And um, as I was waking up this morning, um, I have some mornings where I jump smooth out the bed and I'm up like, yes. And then there are other mornings where I am... Um, awake, but I'm like, Lord, I just want to lay here. I just want to lay here, but I want you to talk to me. I want you to minister to me. And then sometimes I can't get my eyes open. Just, I mean, just enough to really even adjust my eyes or to even allow my eyes to get open. My spirit is awake and, um, I just start, God just starts communing with me. And, um, before I could seek him, search him out before I could say, Hey, speak because your servant is listening. He gave me these words, necessary adjustments. And he took me to the scripture and it's Genesis 12, 1 through 3. And I'm reading from the New International Version today. Um, And remember, you can read any version that you choose of the Bible. You can make our declaration from any version of the Bible you choose. Just remember that when you are declaring Luke 1 and 45 um, today and every day, if you choose to, that you do it and then put and put your name in it, right? Instead of saying she who believes, it's Vivian who believes, it's Gloria who believes, uh, it's Shantae who believes, because we want to make the word personal for us, right? So here we are in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, the New International Version. It reads as follows. The Lord, oh wow, thank you Jesus. I was getting ready to get into this and and I heard, don't skip the introduction. So you know like when you're reading the Bible, certain versions, it'll have a title, right? And um, I was about to jump right over this. It says, the call of Abram. The call of Abram. The call of Abram. So often we want the call and what it entails and the benefits of that. But we don't want to make the adjustments. All right, Lord. Well, on to the verses. (laughs) The Lord has said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So you might think, yeah, but that was for April. Today he's calling you. He's calling you, he's calling me to make the necessary adjustments in order to walk into what he's called us to. So he called him, he called him out and away, right? 
but he was calling him into his purpose, what he had created him for. And that was for him to be a blessing to the entire earth. Now, your call is no different because your assignment, your your purpose, your everything was decided ahead of time before the earth began, before there was seed time and harvest. God had you in mind. You you weren't born to the parents you were born to by accident. You were not born into the situation you were born into by accident. You were not born in a place in this earth in the time that you were born by accident. There's purpose for your life. The whole earth will be blessed through you, through your obedience, through you answering the call. Sometimes our call is going to look like a tough adjustment but a necessary one a very necessary one um sometimes it comes to, there there are different things we'll have to adjust um we'll have to adjust our mindset we'll have to let the lord be what he is which is a mindset regulator we'll have to adjust our mindset to the place of believing that god loves us and he wants more for us and when he calls us out in a way that he's doing that because it's for his purpose, right? Abram did not ask God why you're calling me out. Not because he didn't wonder why. I honestly believe that Abram got to a place in his life that he understood God and that God has a purpose for everything. He did like I, 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 I was trying to put words to earlier of just getting excited about when, whew, excuse me, when God, when I see things shaking and moving because I've learned to trust him. Um, my son asked me a question the other day it was Monday. I was picking him up from work and, um, he asked me a question about my business. And initially, I I had been on guard about uh, the promise of God for my business. And the reason why I say on guard is because that whole day, I literally had to press through some, some things that were not of God. Some thoughts, a mindset that um, the enemy has tried to impose on me, right? And so when my son asked the question initially... I got a little like, uh uh-huh. He says, no, 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 no. He says, this is not for me. And I said, oh, here we go. (laughs) He's operating in the spirit. He's talking to me. He said, um, listen, I've been watching this guy. He said, I follow him on YouTube. And he said, the man began to talk about his first year. He said he has all these videos and he he tells us and he shows us these different things about his business and about, you know, how he was making $125,000 in a week or a day or whatever he goes. But he decided to share about his first year, not his weeks when it's been great and amazing and wonderful. But the man decided to share about his first year. He said in the man share how little money he made in the first year of his business he said I just wondered how you do it he said because you seem to have this thing so good and that you don't seem to let it shake you that your first year has been rough he said but what I know about your business (laughs) Is that it's already blessed. What I know about your business. Is that God is getting ready to do some things for you. And I just needed to. I needed to know if you like this man. uh, Have. uh, How did he say? He said you have. uh, He didn't call it budgets and forecasts. He was trying to explain. He said you have these reports. I said oh yeah yeah yeah. I plan things with God. I have, I have daily things and I have weekly ones and I have monthlies and yearly projections. I have all these things. He goes, so when do you think that's going to roll in for you? But the Holy Ghost wouldn't let me say, Jesus, I didn't. Thank you, Lord. Just do what you're doing. Wouldn't let me say what came to my mind. 
I had to speak truth. And I was only able to do that because of the mindset adjustments that came earlier. Because see, I had accepted that what God said, that I understood his voice, that what God had said to me was true because God had spoken other things to me throughout my life that looked real crazy, right? That left me looking real crazy to people that left me being talked about and snarred at and got uh, snidey remarks. It left me in situations where it might not have looked real good for me. Yet God has kept his word. Jesus. He kept his word. And so this is God's word, right? I'm going to go over the scripture again. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. It says, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Country, your people, and your father's household represents the things we were born into represents the things that we had stayed in and that were comfortable. Your people are the ones that he had surrounded himself with. It's funny because sometimes we accept something that's momentary, that's seasonal, as if it is a lifetime thing. When it's only to serve a purpose. We weren't wrong for loving, for forgiving, for being gracious, for overlooking someone's faults or shortcomings. But at some point, we have to be willing to make the necessary adjustments to get the blessing and the promises of God. Because see, all the promises that God made to Abram came after Abram doing the thing God assigned him to do, which was to leave his country his people in his father's house. And then God gave him definite promises. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. He made him solid. If you do what I say, you're going to get my solid promises and I'm going to make you solid. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So he said, listen to this. If you obey me, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And then you will become a blessing. Obey me and live a blessing. Live as a blessing. And then when you live as a blessing, I will bless those who bless you. So he was letting him know there are going to be people who won't bless you on this journey. There's going to be those who ain't going to like the fact that you had to leave. But I need you to let that be in my hands. I need you to let that be what I do and take care of. Because I'm going to bless those who bless you. Because, see, for people to bless you in a season that they don't understand you, means that they had to be tapped into the God who knows all. Mm. Because, see, when... Oh, God, thank you. So, so um, Jesus... Pastor Sarah Jace Roberts preached uh, a couple months ago, and she talked about how her husband was, uh, she, she had been watching God do things in his life, and he's been shifting and changing. She said, but what you're not going to do is grow so much that you're going to leave me behind. And, and it wasn't, uh, uh, um, she wasn't saying that in a, a evil way or a way that was like, manipulative or you you know I'm going to try to hold you back. What she's saying is that I perceive the move of God. When God says I'm doing a new thing, do you not perceive it? She said I perceive the move of God and I trust God and I trust the God in you to know that when God is making adjustments that I need to be in line with the flow of the spirit of God and be adjusted as well in the process. So I'm going to make the necessary adjustments that God is calling me to make in this season. And because I see him adjusting you, I'm going to stay obedient and let him make the adjustments in me and obey that. So together we can both adjust and we can both remain this this spiritual couple he called us to be to do the work of the kingdom and to, to, to walk in his calling for our lives. 
And as I said, okay, Lord, you told me to talk to them about uh, adjusting their mindsets. Sometimes we don't have to adjust relationships. The access we give people to us, the, the weight we put on relationships. Um, not that life is about like abandoning people, but sometimes people have abandonment issues that have nothing to do with you. And if and that's something that they got to work out with God, right? And when God is telling you to move or he's drawing you away or pulling you away from something and he keeps allowing people to show you the core of them and who they are, you're going to have to at some point do like uh, Maya Angelou said and believe them. But I'm going to add to that and say believe their actions and trust God's word, right? So adjust their mindsets, adjust their relationship. Adjust they love and the way that they love things that they need not to love anymore. Because see, in a certain season, God might have winked at a particular thing that might be an addiction for you or might be something that you're loving, but you know he, t- he pulling you away from it. You know he's trying to get you out of that thing, right? But yet, you just steady loving on it. Well... God needs you to make adjustments in the things you love. And then he told me to talk to you about adjusting your behavior and your thoughts. And you might think mindset adjustment and thought adjustments are different. I mean, are the same. They go hand in hand. But you got to adjust the thoughts that you allow to roll around in your head, right? It said anything that stays in your mind longer than 31 seconds or 30 seconds, it becomes something that you're meditating on. And if you're not careful, it'll become something that you act upon, right? If I meditate on the anger in a situation, instead of taking control of and reacting to something, I mean, I'm sorry, responding to something that happened to me, instead of reacting, I could lose my character, my witness, and all the things that the enemy often uh, will attempt to snatch from you. When if you would adjust your thoughts, adjust your behaviors, the way that you respond to a situation, then the things that he would use in the past won't have the effects they have on you. So anyways, I said, Lord, I'm inviting you in to do what you want to. Don't I won't even get locked into an outline today. You tell me what you want me to say. He gave me mindset, relationships, love, behavior and thoughts. And as I said, well, you want me to cover those things. And then he gave me this final scripture, Mark 10, 29 through 31. Also reading from the New International Version, because that's just the one I chose today, actually. Um, And so the words, it reads as follows. Truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. As we wrap this up, even as I read this now, I it says anyone who, who has left, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a huh, hundred times as much in this present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, <laughs> children and fields along with persecutions. I saw something that I had not ever seen before reading this scripture. The the A part of this scripture, the, the first verse, everything for the most part, I want to say, I noticed a singular when it said mother or father, right? It says brothers and sisters or mother or father. But when you get to verse 30, it says... That they, will, that they won't fail to receive a hundredfold as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields. And you 
you might think, like I just thought, you get one mother. But he's saying whatever you lose, whatever appears a loss, I will replace it abundantly. It will be an overflow, the S, plural, additional, more than. So the thing you're afraid to walk away from, the thing that you know that God is calling you to do, I want to encourage you today to do it. Oh, trust me, I understand the pain. I understand the lack of understanding that will come from people that you may have given chance and chance and chance again to get to know you, to get to understand you, to get to understand who you are. But it didn't work again, right? It didn't work again. It ended in the snide remarks again. It ended in them cursing you in their spirit and even with their words and conversations with other people. But I want to remind you about verse 3 that we read earlier. He said, I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Trust God. Make the necessary adjustments he's calling you to make. Whether they are internal or external. And trust that God keeps his word. And that he will bless you. And that you will become a blessing. And that the whole earth will be blessed because of you. You have listened to the podcast, She Who Believes. And I'm your host, Vivian Bell. And I am indeed she who believes. God bless you.